How can you come to a wet fit and don't expect for you to get wet? You don't know his blows you go get. You watching sad TV. Bring love the reading, sad telecoms. Welcome to SAT TV's News. I am Alicia George, your presenter. In our top stories, police investigate homicide and wounding in Maho. NYC will settle lawsuits on stop and frisk tactics against Caribbean nationals. Corruption across EU breathtaking EU Commission. And in sports, VF Inc. secures Rayburn Blackmore Petro Caribbean 2020 cricket competition title for 2014. Details of these will follow. Nobody can love it the way I do. I'm with to my yodi yodi. We do everything is a welly welly. Your love they make my heart to do yodi yodi. Nobody can love it the way I do. I'm with to my yodi. What's up? My name is Vas. And this is Mesh. And we, we are, are brackets. brackets. And you're watching Sat TV. Don't miss it because if you miss it, you will lose it. Brackets say so. One love, everybody. How can you come to a wet fit and don't expect for you to get wet? You don't know his blows you go get. You watching sad TV. Welcome back. The National Development Fund of Dominica, NDFD, in partnership with the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation in Agriculture, ICA, held its closing session and training ceremony in marketing, packaging, labeling, and food safety on Friday, January 31st. The project was geared towards rural women involved in business enterprises to include members of the Margaret Community Tourism Group, Northeast Agricultural Women in Development, the Northern District Progressive Women's Club, Mont Prosper Women's Farmers Group, and the Girardel Flowers Group. mobilize resources to contribute towards the reduction of poverty and um, to provide training with regard to human resource development, especially for the micro and small business sectors of Dominica. The NDFD is operating under the theme striving to promote and support entrepreneurial success and excellence. According to Mr. Joseph, the program went through three processes, the introduction of a self-learning guide, training and human development, and application of the training guide. So we have evaluated the businesses within our assessments, and we have come up with a few significant areas which we have identified as being needs for these target groups. Hence the reason for going into food safety, because quite a few of the Businesses that we touch have something to do with food, either into agro-processing. It is hoped that in the end, these businesses develop into the type of sustainable business that will generate revenue and create employment along the way. ICA's representative, Mr. Kent Coppell, says the organization's agricultural contribution will allow for the empowerment of rural women groups selected to produce a more equitable and inclusive development for selected Caribbean communities. Our intention is to strengthen agricultural contribution to the development of territories and to, to rural well-being by enhancing the capacities of rural women, by promoting and supporting partici participatory learning methodologies to encourage group networking and leadership, to encourage technical, administrative and marketing financial support to rural women, mainly small producers, including young women, in the formulation and implementation of innovative projects in rural communities. 
The workshop is part of an ICA project dubbed Working Capital Program for Rural Women Entrepreneurs in the Caribbean and is funded under ICA's Fund for Technical Cooperation. In more news, students who attend school in the capital city, Roseau, and its environs took the message of drug prevention to the streets on Friday, January 31st, parading in an anti-drug march. They encircled the streets of Roseau, reciting various chants like, Be alert, drugs hurt. The rally opened with a few brief speeches at the Botanic Gardens under the theme, Making Health Your New High in Life. President of the National Youth Council of Dominica, Mr. Josiah Benoit, reminded the students that they are the future of Dominica in whom much is invested. The reason that we, the only ones, are working today. And I want to say one thing to you, that you are special, you are unique, and that God has a plan for your life. And that plan will take you much further than you might possibly be able to think of right now. But you will not be able to get very far without a solid education. You will not be able to get too far unless you maintain your health. He told them that by maintaining a positive lifestyle, they are able to maintain their own health. Tourists around the world pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to visit the Caribbean just to experience this fresh air. You have it in abundance here in Dominica, so let's preserve it and let's preserve our health so that we can enjoy it. Meanwhile, Ms. Jacinta Banis, director of the National Drug Abuse Prevention Unit, asked the students to focus on being healthy and to speak to their peers about the dangers of drugs. So the information you get, I want you to use it wisely and make good decisions. Boys and girls, if you do not do drugs, you're going to succeed. You're going to do well. You're going to be an A student in your school. The people are going to walk up to you and say, oh, you was a smart boy. You was a smart, um, smart girl. So I want to encourage you to make that thing your mantra for the rest of the year. The rally was headed by the Ministry of Health and the National Drug Abuse Prevention Unit in closing off Drug Awareness Month in January. In more news, the police are seeking the public's cooperation in locating two missing fishermen. Two brothers from the community of Portsmouth, 33-year-old Andy Mitchell and 28-year-old Samuel Mitchell, left on a fishing expedition about 5 a.m. on Saturday, February 1, 2014, and have not been seen or heard from since. The fishing vessel is a blue open keel boat named Take It Easy, powered by a 50 horsepower outboard engine. A search is presently ongoing by local fishermen and the local Coast Guard, as well as the Maritime Rescue Coordinating Center in Martinique. Anyone with information on the two missing fishermen are asked to call the police hint line at 1 800 4468 or Crime Stoppers at 1 800 8477. In other stories, investigations are ongoing into a domestic violence incident which led 30-year-old McKeith George of Maho nursing injuries at the Princess Margaret Hospital and 27-year-old Kiwani Samuel of Marigot, who resided at Maho, dead. Reports are that at about 6 a.m. on Sunday, February 2, 2014, McKeith was transported to the Princess Margaret Hospital suffering from lacerations to his head where he was treated and later admitted. About 8.30 a.m. the same day, the police discovered the body of Kiwani locked in the bathroom of her house with lacerations to her body and a knife stuck to her throat. The body was pronounced dead by a medical practitioner. A coroner's inquest will be convened followed by a post-mortem. The police are asking anyone with information about this incident to call the police hint line at 1-800-4468 or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-8477. In more news, contrary to a report by a local radio station, where United Workers' Party candidate for the Grand Four Revestory constituency, Dr. Thompson Fontaine, was accused of misappropriation of funds 
During his tenure as the treasurer of the Dominica Academy of Arts and Sciences, DAS, Dr. Fountain says this accusation is a political gimmick and is false. But, you know, this is the most preposterous thing I've heard, you know, and this happened in 2009. And as Clinton rightly described what happened, let me explain something that the Dominican people might not be aware of. When Clinton directed me to move the money from the DAS account into a CD, it's because we felt that we had the money in the checking account that was earning nothing. And we, we were trying to make money. There are different projects that we were doing. In the time, we had funds in there that was a fundraiser that we had done for a gentleman who needed a, a kidney transplant. And we were looking for as much money as we could get. My credit union offered the highest rate of interest at the time. In fact, my, my, credit, my credit union interest rate was as much as 3% higher than the regular bank account. So when I, when, I, uh, when I moved the money from the DAS account into my credit union account, obviously I could not put it on, a, on, the, uh, on the name of the organization because you, the way the credit unions operate there is only for employees. It's an employee credit union. So I could not transfer the funds on the DAS name. Dr. Fontaine noted he then put the funds under his name so it would attract interest as a business name could not be placed on the application. The president of DAS, Dr. Clayton Schillingford, would then receive the bank statements of the account so that he was aware of any transaction conducted. A few months later, Dr. Schillingford instructed Dr. Fontaine to return the money to the DAS account. There had been a misunderstanding about the money being placed back into the previous account where it would not accumulate interest, and the board of directors was informed. The money was returned upon advice from the attorney for the organization and Dr. Peter St. Jean. I felt at the time that, you know, the way the, the email thing went on, it was almost questioning my character, questioning me. You don't need that. I've been that treasurer for 11 years. Every year, I've been giving you guys a financial statement. The money's accounted for. You know, every year I give a statement to everybody. Everybody knows the financial situation of the association. And I just felt slighted. I felt, you know, that guys were saying, you know, making it look, making me kind of look bad. And I, I resigned on a matter of principle. President of DAS, Dr. Clayton Schillingford, who confirmed Dr. Fontaine's account on the matter, says the issue, resolved since 2009, being brought to the public's attention is a political gimmick by supporters of the Dominica Labour Party and confirmed that there was no misappropriation of funds from the DAS account. He stated he instructed Dr. Fontaine to move the funds into a CD account so it could attract interest and a significant amount was sitting in an account gaining none. Where the error occurred, from my standpoint, was Thompson took these monies and put into a CD as he was instructed to do, but attached his name to it, which I think he did it in good faith, but it was not the intention in an organization of that kind for such a thing to be done. So I regarded the matter as an understandable error on his part and I requested that these monies that were in a CD and the credit union in his name, which I had full knowledge of and therefore the idea that he could have used that money for any personal purpose was impossible because I knew how much went into the CD, I knew when it went into the CD and how it went into the CD. The question was, the CD in the credit union, his credit union, be in his name. And obviously, I tried and eventually had that matter corrected. There was no money, let me repeat, no money from the DAS which Thompson acquired for his use. That never occurred. Dr. Schillingford went on to say this was just another attempt to put the reputation of Dr. Fontaine into disrepute by persons critical to the government. In other news, Phase 1 of the Point Heritage Project was officially unveiled on Friday, January 31, 2014, when Chief Executive Officer of the Dominique Corporation, Mrs. Jennifer Ed, cut the ribbon to two new bus stops at the Port Cassé roundabout. 
This project is one of many as part of efforts to celebrate the Mont Tropital World Heritage Site and to develop a heritage anchor for the Commonwealth of Dominica. It focuses primarily on the beautification and enhancement of this strategic point of convergence at the heart of the Nature Isle while stimulating growth in the surrounding rural communities. This is all about the efforts of, of a team. God did pro uh, promise that uh, he would send like-visioned individuals and he would provide for his project. And this is what we are seeing taking place here this afternoon, the unfolding of the first phase of Domini Community Project's Pont Heritage Project, which includes the bus shelters, but also to come in, the, in another phase, the development of the roundabout, the central focal point, and ultimately a rest area, which will include parking, um, stalls for vendors and that. The project also aims to contribute to Dominica's socio-economic and cultural development. Located on lands owned by the government of Dominica, the project has been under development over a period of 15 years and was approved and endorsed by the cabinet in 1998. It involves the work of Dr. Alwyn Bully and sculptor Mr. Roger Bonnet, who are part of a steering committee formed by the project. Special thank you. Giuseppe Caruba of uh, Lewis Berger International, he's the international consultant. He's not with us this afternoon. Um, he represents the government of Dominica, particularly the Ministry of Public Works. And uh, he has been significantly supportive in, in many ways in design, layout, and just encouragement, and you know, working along with Emil Gardekan and Sons through their representatives, Mr. Srinivas Kale and Mr. Singh, and we say thank you very much to them, to Mr. Jacques Gardekan. They were the ones who provided us with the concrete structure, the bare structure of both of the shelters, and we're grateful for that. We are having showers of blessings upon us right now. Behrman Energy, represented by Benjamin Resch and Verena, who is not with us this afternoon. Thank you so much. Benjamin was here up to very, very late last night. Very late, meaning after 10 and 11. He's been up here on many evenings and again very early this morning. Thank you, Benjamin. Thank you also goes out to the Ministry of Environment, Natural Resources and Physical Planning, the Ministry of Tourism and the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry and the Whitey Kubuli National Train Management Unit. Others include the Regional Council of Martinique, Department of Environment and Energy, in collaboration with private sector companies including Escort Caribe, Hydro and Energy de Martinique. In more stories, in an effort to further promote Dominica's musicians and their music, one local producer has took it upon himself and launched his new record label titled Machine Dominique, the brainchild of Krishna Dada Lawrence. Manager of Machine Dominique, Mr. Hanif Gregoire, stated that their mission is to produce and promote a brand of music which is unique yet appealing to an international audience, noting there is an urgent need for a form of structure in our local music industry. For decades now, good quality music has been produced from Dominican artists, yet still we have failed to make a resounding impact in the regional and international markets which we all will agree is long overdue. We must come to realize that in order for music to grace the shores of foreign countries and make that impact that we all thirst for, we must first develop a formula to package our product in a manner which will entice these foreign audiences. With the shared vision of owner founder of Machine Dominic Records, Mr. Krishna Lawrence, professionally known as Dara, and his diligent team, we aim to address these loopholes in our local music industry. We at Machine Dominic Records will provide a one-stop shop for artists, musicians, versed in our local music genres, Karas and Buyo. Any artist under our umbrella will have the privilege to have exclusive access to a top-of-the-line recording studio, Cotton Group Studios, where he or she shall have the opportunity to work with one of Dominica's leading producers, Krishna Dada Lawrence. He noted all artists signed to Machine Dominic will have the privilege of working with a professional management team 
to market and promote their music, build their image, and organize bookings for performances. The label currently boasts of artists including the 2013 NCCU Kadas Lipsa winner Cletus Halibus Abraham and Derek the Hunter St. Rose. Dada has worked with a long list of bands such as Triple K, WCK, Midnight Grubbers, just to name a few. He is the man responsible for producing the song Big Things Popping by Dali from Guadeloupe, which is with its tag music video receiving over 1 million views, which was a first for Buya music. Dada has produced other hits such as Two Greedies, Hangover, and Harley Butts 2013 Kada Slips to Finals winner, Long Term. Machine Dominic aims at producing a brand of music which should be accepted and consumed firstly by all our brothers and sisters across the region. <coughs> it's time that we face the fact and accept it that soca music has grown to become the most prevalent music genre across the Eastern Caribbean and, in, and, it, and it's used as a tool to bring our shores and culture in the region together in sound. He said that I has fused bouillon with soca music to produce a more familiar sound that can appeal to all audiences called bouillon soca, also in an effort to forge collaborations with local and regional artists. Two rhythms produced by Dada include the Toxic Rhythm and the Madras Rhythm, which features Halibut with a song titled False Hair, The Hunter, Miss Aguada, also known as Old Benz, and Janet Azuz, an artist from Grenada and St. Lucia. The Radiation Rhythm is next to be released under the Machine Dominic Records. <laughs> Change is a phenomenon Comes with the rising sun If you don't ride that way That way is gonna ride all over you A leader should pay attention to This fundamental principle Is only the truth That always remains unchanged Fans and well-wishers of popular Calypsonian Dennis and Dash Joseph was elated when he released his new song entitled Time for Change on Friday, January 31st, 2014. In explaining the concept for the song, he noted it was made for the people based on the outcry of the public. And my song now, Time for Change, I know the people are deep in politics. They, 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 it right in their blood. You know, I, I expect that. And the thing is, you're supposed to put politics in your blood, man. It's man that there, it's human beings, it's mankind. Don't put that in your blood because we black people, we find ourselves killing each other for the, on politics and doing so much thing. And the people that created the politics vibes itself don't do things like that. You know, but we, because we more emotional, we black people are, we're more spiritual. So we take things in our blood, but we have to take the right things in our blood. Now, when you hear it saying change and politics in your blood, a way I can tell you to take that out of you is to think of change in all forms because sometimes you're eating rice yesterday and you decide you're eating macaroni today it's time for change you know take it like that too so you could enjoy the thing you know it's kind of violent, it's kind of so since its release dice's fans have been voicing their love and satisfaction of the song to those who may not like the song because of its political commentary according to mr joseph political commentary is vital in calypso and if this is relisted the art form will die because you can talk about love, and I think R and B already talking about love. You can talk about party. I think Soka already talking about party. You can talk about job business too much, and think I think reggae doing that. You know, but that one I have to talk about that thing there. So when you stop doing that and you resist, you know, uh, you you can kill our caribs so that way, and you, you know, and you don't put them things in your blood, man. The politics thing. Because when you go back to your your police station and you do your thing, you do your thing. Are you supposed to do your thing? You know. But when it's come on time, I enjoy the thing. He added his second song has been completed, which will be released very soon. When government counterproductive of what their citizens are trying to achieve. When one set alone are rising and the other judges are spreading up and leaving. Oh, it's nothing strange. It's time for change. In other stories, 20 of 32 Calypsonians have advanced into the Dominica Calypso Association's semi-finals after participating in the quarter-finals on Saturday, February 1st at the Newtown Savannah. The lucky 20 include Leona, Chris B, 
the web, Bittle J, Observer, the wave, Bob, Hunter, Black Diamond, Picky, Lugas, Bouple, Jama B, Daddy Chess, Young Bull, Benno, Checker, JD, Psy, and Explosion. Forget the crucified Jesus. Why we stood on this side and watch? Leona Peters is the only female who advanced into the semi-final round with her song titled Baby Machine. I really believe for true. Right now, I would be touched by the next level. My heart is broken into pieces, just like all the broken promises. Just fooling myself Take a note on the man Oh, oh If I had a good education I wouldn't be done I ought to be in The 20 will compete in the semi-finals round on Saturday, February 15, where only 12 will make it through to the final competition and compete against the reigning Calypso Monarch King, Dice. Competitors who made it through in last year's competition but failed to remain up to par this year included The Ghost, Checo, Transetter, and Man himself. Other quarterfinals participants included Lady Star, Triumph, Rast Kelly, Checo, Sugar S, and Alicia. And in court news, the police have arrested and charged three men following the seizure of alleged cocaine and cannabis on January 30th, 2014 at Capuchin. They are Alexis Carrier of Lago Portsmouth, Kendall Sylvester of Woodford Hill, and Ferdinand Daniel of Zikak Portsmouth. The men have been charged with importation, possession, and importation with intent to supply 45,000 grams of cocaine and importation, possession, and possession with intent to supply 99,000 grams of cannabis. The cocaine has a street value of $1.215 million, while the cannabis has a street value of $217,800. They appeared before Rosa Magistrate on Monday, February 3, 2014. Full details on their bail application will be presented in a subsequent news package. This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, regional highlights. <laughs>